Okay, here we're going to be doing problems 27 through 30. So the directions say the given functions are one to one. Find the inverse, and this is for all problems 29 through or 27 through 29. So they're telling me that this is a one to one function. That all three of these are one to one functions, um, and so I need to find the inverse. The process to find the inverse is first change the notation from function notation to just y equals notation and then interchange the x and y values so the y becomes an x and all the x's become y's and then the next step which is the harder step is to solve for y so isolate y so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by my common denominator so that it will cancel here, or reduce is actually the proper word. And um, over here, I'm going to go ahead and distribute that x, so I get xy minus 2x equal to 7y plus 5. Now, y is the variable that I'm trying to isolate, so what the goal is, is to get all the terms with a y on one side of the equation, and all the terms without a y on the other side of the equation. So I'm going to minus 7y on both sides, and I'm going to add 2x on both sides. So what I end up with is xy minus 7y equals 2x plus 5. Then I need to factor this y that they have in common out. And then finally I can get y by itself by dividing by that factor x minus 7. So they will reduce here and I'll have y equals 2x plus 5 over x minus 7. And then the last step is to change the notation since as soon as I interchanged the variables I was no longer talking about f of x. I was now talking about f inverse of x. And so this y needs to become f inverse of x. For number 28, I'm going to kind of put a separator here. We're going to do the same thing again, change the notation to y equals, interchange the variables x and y, and then start solving for y. So before I can get rid of the natural log, I have to get rid of the constant and the multiplier first. So we get rid of this term and we have x minus 4 I don't know why I put that in parentheses but it's okay doesn't make a difference then I get rid of this multiplier so I'll divide by 3 and divide by 3 so I get x minus 4 over 3 equal to ln of 2y minus 1 and then now in order to cancel out a natural logarithm, I'm going to apply the same base on both sides. So the base of a natural logarithm is e. So I'm going to have e x minus 4 over 3 and e raised to the ln 2y minus 1. The e and the exponential and the logarithm with the same bases will cancel, leaving me with e to the x minus 4 over 3 equal to 2y minus 1. Then I can add 1 on both sides, leaving me with e x minus 4 over 3 plus 1 on the side, 2y, divide by 2 on both sides, and I end up with um, this expression. I am going to have to come over here and bleed into my space for number 29. So I'm going to have y equals e to the x minus 4 over 3 1 divided by 2 and then change that notation into the inverse notation and we get e x minus 4 over 3 plus 1 over 2 and so that's the inverse that we get there now we're going to do the last problem but we're going to have to bring it down over here so first change the notation to y equals 
And this over here is just information about the domain. It, we're not going to use it when we're trying to find the inverse. It's just what allows the squared function to be one to one. Because typically the square function is a parabola, and a parabola is not one to one. So we're going to uh, only consider half of the parabola as far as the graph is concerned, but algebraically we're just dealing with the function. So we're going to interchange the x and y's, and then we're going to solve for y. So take the square root, the square root, and because you're only dealing with values that are greater than 5, that means it's positive. So you should be taking um, only the positive square root here. So we have the square root of x and then y minus 5. And then I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I get that the square root of x plus 5 equals y. And then change this into the function notation, the inverse function notation. So square root of x plus 5. And there we go. So now we have the answer for F inverse, we have the answer for G inverse, and we have the answer for H inverse. Now number 30 says the amount of a sample of a radioactive substance remaining in grams after T years is given by this equation. Q of T equals 200 E to the negative 0.15 T. So the two parts are what is the half-life of the radioactive substance? Half-life means how long does it take for you to have only half of the um, initial amount remaining? Well, the initial amount is here, 200, and half of that would be 100. So how long does it take for this to reach 100? So divide by your coefficient, and we get 0 0.5 or 1 half equal e to the negative 0 0.015 t. How do we get rid of an exponential function? We apply a logarithm with the same base. So the logarithm with base e is ln. So I'm going to apply the ln on both sides. And then on this side, it's going to stay ln of 0.5. On this side, these are going to cancel, and I'm going to have negative 0.015t. And so to solve for t, I need to divide by that coefficient on both sides. And so I get t equals, let's see, we have a fraction ln of 0.5 over negative 0.05. And if we round this to the nearest um, hundredth, we can say that nine will change that to a one, so 46.21. And that's the answer for part A. For part B, it says how many grams are left after 80 years? So you're just going to take the problem and plug in 80 for the number of years. And so I'm going to type that in my calculator, negative 0 0.015 times 80. And if I round that to the nearest hundredth, I'm going to have 60.24 grams remaining.